How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Hope everyone is having a lovely day. So the NFLPA comes out today with the team ranks as far as you know certain categories go around the facilities. You know your e, uh, your dietitians, your training, your coaching staff, your strength and conditioning, your uh, how the team treats your family, so on and so forth. The full list comes out. The Bengals grading A over there with their head coach, Zach Taylor. Lots of credit to Zach Taylor. You, you consider the culture he has brought to this football team and the confidence, the way this team plays, even when Joe Burrow goes down. I mean, he's he's definitely earned his stripes as um, deserving of that, you know, the way he treats his players as an A sort of grade. Now, the things that stand out, obviously, make no just about, I think this is why you even talk about Zach Taylor in even higher regards. When you consider that this team is grading dead last in how they treat players families and how they feed these players and how uh, they are properly you know a dietitian or nutritionist is brought in so on and so forth when they're dead last in those categories and you stop and think hey it's pretty easy and maybe that's why in the marvin lewis era there was a lot of you know players that were unhappy or rumblings and even before that you know with carson palmer it's very easy to stop and say wow these guys could be frustrated and look around the league and say they're so much better everywhere else. And that could trickle throughout the locker room. But you talk about Zach Taylor bringing in the guys, Zach Taylor coaching these guys and, you know, keeping that culture up here. It feels like the Bengals locker room is one of the best culturally, cultural wise, you know, morale wise, vibe wise, if you will, locker rooms in a league. Lots of credit to Zach Taylor. Got to give some credit to Joe Burrow, of course, as well. Your leaders in that locker room. But we take a step back. And I can't help but think. Now I know I know a lot of people understand the situation. I make no seven hundred fifty k a year either. Uh, not even close. You know, it'll take me twenty years to get that. Mo- that. That's what most you know your everyday American they say. It take them twenty years to make the league minimum in one year that these NFL players are getting. And I completely understand that. So they shouldn't be complaining about you know getting no daycare. Take you know players aren't getting they ain't getting fed three times a day. They're in a daycare center for their kids, uh, which the Bengals don't provide. But now here's the difference. Here's the difference. Now imagine, and this is my issue I have with it. You're an employee. Let's say you, you know you work in an office. So I don't know what you do. Maybe you're a network uh, t- a network technician or something. I don't know. You don't have to just work there. Maybe just down the street or just over here. And in a football player situation, you know, they're all over the map anyway. Let's say there's 20 different places you could work. Every single place has an opening, but they offer more. Maybe they have a home fitness center. Maybe they have a better insurance plan. Maybe just in general, the way they treat their staff. Are you going to stay at the place that treats you like crap? Where you, and when you realize everywhere else is treating you better, or are you going to go and venture off and take that big step somewhere else? And I think that's where it comes back to. Because if you're a football player, if I'm a football player, I'm stopping and thinking, hey, wow, 32nd in the league? I mean, f- forget about <laughs> Forget about, man, the money for a second. Forget about a team player taking a pay cut. Why would you take a pay I'm just, I'm thinking, you know, myself here, why would I take a pay cut for a team? Just like, why would I take a pay cut for an organization where I feel like they don't treat me as fairly or as well as another one does? If I could go to Kansas City, have full-time daycare. If I could go to Kansas City, have a full-time personal nutritionist, there's a dietitian. Bengals don't even have a dietitian on the staff full-time. If I could go to these places. I know my family's taken care of. I feel like they're going to be treated so much better and I'm still going to be competitive. I'm going to get the paid the exact same amount of money. Why would I not leave? I think that is the big important factor here is this is a team you're trying to win. It is a business. It is a team you're trying to win. You're trying to provide the best product on the field. And obviously, you got to remember that these players are humans. And when they see, again, 28 other teams around the league provide a daycare facility, and you're one of the teams that aren't. I get it. Mike Brown kind of hard nosed like that. It's like, oh, you know, you got to teach these boys how to be men. Okay, that's great. There's other ways to do it if every other team's offering that. And I just, again, thinking personally, you know, we can all have our own opinions here. It's like, oh, yeah, of course, there's a lot of people that most of them, they play because they want to want to compete. But it's either the play want to win and compete or number one is I'm playing for my family. I'm playing to take care of my family. I want to make sure my family's in the best possible situation there is. And when you see that, hey, I got a pri- they got a private you know room and all this stuff for these t- my family here they're taking care of here, and then you look at Cincinnati and say, oh, that's not an option. There's not a place to drop the kids off before work. I, you take away all that stuff, the stress of that stuff, 
I, I mean, obviously, again, they're making so much money. I get it. But there's all these other teams that offer better. And then you look and see the, the dietitian side of things, the feed, the eating side of things. And my thing with this is this. All of this in general, first of all, builds up a locker room. I think, again, what we can all relate to here is if you go to work feeling good, you feel like you're taking care of, you feel like they have your best interest, you feel like you're appreciated, out there you're going to work better. You go to work and they feel like, you know, if you go to work feeling like every other place has it better than you and your bosses don't care about you, the owner's like, whatever, we're going to get by as cheap as possible, you feel a little bit slighted. Now, obviously, the person that's probably playing a little bit better, performing a little bit better is the one's going to work that's happy, feels appreciated, compared to the one that feels slighted, which is the way it can kind of give off those vibes when you're not providing stuff that every other team can provide when they know that the NFL's jumped the salary cap up 20 plus million dollars this year. Uh, but you go back to the dietitian side of things. And this is so important, too, because Bengals did great really well, you know, got, got in a B, B plus area in the strength and conditioning, the training department. That's great. But what's very important, for that sort of performance for your strength and conditioning performance is the kitchen. A lot of it starts in the kitchen. Uh, you know, your energy in general, your, your mental space in general, if you're eating a bunch of crap all the time, you're not going to feel as well compared to if you got somebody cooking these meals up, preparing you, telling you, you need to eat this, this, and this. A lot of people don't understand that. Even athletes, you know, you grow up, but unless you take time to dig into it, when a lot of us don't, which is perfectly fine, you don't understand it fully. Not everybody can, you know, eat Skittles 20 times or two bags of Skittles a day like DK Metcalf or McDonald's every day by like Chad Johnson. Everybody's body does not work like that. Those guys are freak athletes in, in that kind of regard and they're gifted. A lot of us, you know, you need the proper nutrition or you're going to feel kind of tired. You're going to feel kind of lethargic. So when you see that and you think about how much that affects the performance on the field and say this team's not investing into that, it's a concern. Because look how good they're playing right now. Look how great the morale is right now. The guys that this team's bringing in right now. If you consider they boost up the amenities on the side. If you consider they do things that can, again, just, uh, they're up here. It feels like, it really does. It feels like they're up here from a, just a locker room standpoint. And you consider you boost that stuff up, they'd be up here. To think that this team can get better internally in some regards when they're already as good as they are. I mean, and they're easy fixes. I think that's the point, right? It's easy fixes. You go hire one or two guys to do this. Uh, it takes a little spot to create a room here. It, it's not a lot of work. But sometimes the little things can make big or turn into big things and make big things happen. And I think, you know, hopefully that's something, you know, we've seen it this year. The Bengals are talking about the upgrading the locker room, the upgrading the field. You know, Mike Brown and this team starting to make some more investments into this team. And hopefully with the more winning they do, the culture continues to improve. If people continue to show up the games, we continue to see more and more investments into this team because i do i think it helps in general as a whole again you know we just talk like, like i can't stress enough with like the pay cut thing if it feels like you're you know you're being top tier treatment here and you're a championship contender a year in and year out it's like all of a sudden it's like you know what? i am incentivized a little bit more to stay here especially if you started here for your first four years maybe you started settling down and stuff but when you have that idea it kind of trickle in your head like oh there's better elsewhere and I can get paid just as much or a little more, you know, that's, that's what kind of makes it harder to retain some of your younger guys or bring in some free agents. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, lots changed, a lot of improvements over the last few years in Cincinnati. And I think we'll continue to see them just right now. It's, again, it's, it's a startling scene, thing to see to be dead last in three separate areas. Again, and again props, to, props to Zach Taylor, props to this team, considering, you know, how the players in the NFLPA and everybody else's, you know, these surveys happen regarding this team to consider they're still where they're at. Lots of props to those guys. Nonetheless, love y'all. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.